Oh, it's yeah. all positive. Yeah. One more question before we switch, because we got to talk about some other sports before we finish yeah. up. Who is the best gypsy fighter of all time? Turn up a bit of my eyes, please. Yo, yo, yo. You said we'll always be together, please. Eh? Spend these billions in together, please. Eh? Share that love with equal measure, please. Eh? How dare you walk away? You said we'll always be together, please. Eh? Spend these billions here together, please. Eh? Share that love with equal measure, please. Eh? How dare you walk away? Don't play with my mind. Don't play with my heart. Don't play with my mind. Don't play with my heart. Don't play with my mind. Don't play with my mind. She had me bleaching in a trap. Hello everybody, it's QB. This is Glenn. And this is All Sports. I'm starting to yes, sir. Yeah, like it's got it, a ring to like it. Now. Yeah, I'm starting to get like used it, to it. All yeah. sports. Yeah. Let's introduce our guest today with the great don't Tony Giles. And get it right. Men fear me, women <laughs> love me, and children want to be me. Tony Giles. <laughs> I'm the rhino, I'm mad. Ask your mum and dad. I'm actually her dad as it goes. You've, uh, got, you've got two guests today. What's your name? Delilah. Hello, Delilah. She Hello, nice to Delilah. meet you. Uh, she is the fuel for my fire, let's just say. Do you know what I'm going to do one minute before we go? I just want you to just get it out of the way now. Yep. You've got an announcement to make. Just make it now. Quick, quick so, two minutes. So we, we get onto your story. Yes. Yeah, so um, we've repped that sport. Um, we're going to be... Uh, we've got 3X Boxing, which is a professional boxing league. Mm -hmm. We've just got a license, me, Grant Miller, um, to be, to be held, uh, holding highest level boxing events mm -hmm. yeah in the uk and all around the world we would like to have the one of the biggest show and bring the wbo mm -hmm. wba and the titles to africa and do a big mm -hmm. show over there that mm -hmm. is that is the goal but That's we've goal. just got the same license as what misfit and kingpin um has got so there's some big things coming sorry so very tell the audience what misfit is for they don't so up. misfits yeah. is a boxing organization that's got tommy fury uh, mm -hmm. fighters like that like youtubers and mm -hmm. that on kingpin's the one i fit i'm more than sure it's kingpin there's got KSI and people like that. So okay. they're like, yeah, yeah. The, the highest end of it mm -hmm. and the most views they've got. So it's going to be interesting. And um, yeah, they's, yeah, it's nice. Crazy. Congratulations, man. Thank Congratulations. Well. Yeah, man. So go ask him. Yes. So how did you get into fighting? How did I get into fighting? Yeah. It was just, I'm, I'm a gypsy. So for, yeah. for those who, of the people that don't know me, um, I come from a gypsy background. So with education, I've never been to school or anything like that. So it's a little bit awkward because even though everybody around my area where I live, which is Virginia Waters, which mm -hmm. is in Surrey, was a beautiful area, you know, mm -hmm. it's like I jog around the Queen's Back Garden every morning from yeah. Windsor Castle. Beautiful. And then they've got a gypsy site, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. And um, even though that we come from the same area, it was totally different. Sorry, are you allowed to pitch up anywhere? Pardon? Are you, are you like gypsies allowed to pitch up anywhere? Well, no, we've, know. We've, we've had a, or do we've you need a, contracts or something? Yeah, so we've, in every gypsy site, um, in every town um, in the whole of England, yeah, the council has to put a gypsy site. Yeah, and they, they have to have they one. They have to. For all them unsociable people, you know. So oh. them anti-sociable people, I should say. Okay. Because that's how I do feel anti-sociable. Because it's just like, if you don't go to school with the people from the area, yeah. you don't really know them that you well. You don't really know I bet them, They know who you are, you know that. You end up having connections with them, mm -hmm. yeah, later on in life. But mm -hmm. for, yeah. for the beginning of your life, so where there's that bit missing, you always seem to concentrate and you're like directed towards it from the elders into the fight game. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's n have you ever heard of a gypsy that don't like fighting? Never met one yet. Never yeah, met one exactly. Yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> never want to fight one either. <laughs> so, <laughs> never met one yet. Never. My, uh, see, my my object was to, I was never going to be a, a criminal, a thief or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't in, in in my genes. It was, I'd rather get my face beat in and know that I'm going home every day to my kids and I've got a career and I've got mm -hmm. something to thrive to all, to, to, to yeah, to head towards basically. What's your, yeah. What's your record? So I started boxing when I was like, started the training when I was six, properly in a boxing club, the Foley Arms. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't even allowed to get my license for a few years after. So I just had to have gym shows. Mm -hmm. So we literally every weekend we was doing gym shows all over the country. Mm -hmm. 
My younger brother, unbeaten pro boxer. What is boxer. a gym show for everyone? Well, so a gym show yeah. is uh, for a boxer who hasn't got a license and they're not <laughs> okay, old enough yeah. to do it. That's a gym okay, show. Okay. So, yeah, <laughs> but my younger brother, he was an undefeated pro fighter. He fought David A. hard undercards and things like that, but he got mm. to the age of maybe about 21 and then he packed it in. Oh. But his amateur record, he had 54 amateur. He used to fight with Billy Joe Saunders training mm -hmm. and a few other top um, boxers. But and, um, do you know what Jamie Cox? He fought George Groves. Yeah. Yeah, my younger yeah, brother fought, George fought him in the finals of the ABAs. But mm -hmm. my brother had 54 amateur fights and he won all 54 of those. Mm -hmm. Went on to pro, undefeated in pro. Um, So I think he had 12, 14 fights. And then my older brother, same sort of thing. He's, he's, a, he's a trainer now for the Pinewood Star Boxing Club. Yeah, so uh, I think he had something like 30 fights, won a few championships. Mm -hmm. So three brothers all into the same slight. Same sport is, yeah, it helps you when you're at home, mm -hmm. you know, like there's competition there yeah, constantly, definitely. especially when you're on a site full of gypsies and every one of them, mm -hmm. all the kids older and younger than you, they're all going for that same thing, you know. Same, same spot. Yeah, so yeah, very competitive. But I always knew from a young age that I wanted to earn money out of it and I wanted mm -hmm. to make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. So, and I knew with amateur that, that, that they wasn't no money in it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, so it's very hard, so. Yeah, later on in life, as I say, it did start working out for me. But a lot mm -hmm. of years of having to go work every day, coming back, I either have to go running or if not Training. to the gym and get your face beaten, you know. Mm. But what you put into life, you get back out. Definitely, 100%. But I've had quite a few setbacks. The main setbacks has been family related and due to the culture that I come from. Yeah. One second. So um you you done um kickboxing as well, right? So the yeah, the kickboxing, K one and kickboxing, yeah. that was um that was hard. You gotta remember, lads, I was the first gypsy ever, yeah, in the whole of the history of the gypsy culture, the term professional at uh, MMA and cage fighting, you know. Oh. So so there's a lot of boxers, every one of them's boxers, you know, and they can have a have a mm -hmm. bare knuckle fight. But when when you're going into the mixed martial arts world, yeah, it is the elite. You know, so mm -hmm. I knew I had to have a good ground game. So when I was doing my kickboxing, you can go to any kickboxing club and prof uh, how much you put in, you get back out, you oh, know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. to, be in, to be a professional MMA fighter, you have to have an established ground game. If mm -hmm. you do not have like judo, jujitsu at a high level, when you hit that floor, you're going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Bones broken, yeah, or choked out unconscious. you got to remember, mm -hmm. that referee's in there for one reason, mm -hmm. yeah, to save your life. Save yeah. your life. Yeah, because yeah. you get hold, held in a hold mm -hmm. for too long, no oxygen yeah. to the brain, you're, you're, you're dead, dead or brain dead, dead you know? Dead. So it's like one of the most intense sports. People don't understand because they don't do it. Mm -hmm. But like these last few years, it's been becoming a lot, a lot more mainstream. Mm -hmm. yeah, people starting to realise what it is. Like Jason Ratcliffe, I noticed that you had him mm -hmm. on here the other day. Yeah, yeah. Me and him both fought for KSW. Mm -hmm. I fought the Olympic champion, was in the changing room together. Mm -hmm. And I know that I was looking at him and he was fit. And same, like five years prior to that, we was at London Troxley at mm -hmm. UCM and mate. Troxley, yeah. Both in the changing room, mm -hmm. looking at each other. Mm -hmm. And I know he's going through his head, the same mm -hmm. as what I'm going through my head. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's it's a hard thing a hard because... Thing. When you're, when you're in that changing room and you're the last fight of the night, you've got to watch every mm. one of those come Nervous. in there, either with their hands in their air or mm. if not, on a stretcher. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's what sort of level it was at. Mm -hmm. So, do you know what? It's hard. Just ask you one thing. You see you saying about the culture you come from. I'm going yeah. to explain that a bit more. Yeah. The, like, like, you know, sometimes does it, does it, does it, does it find you, it gets blocks in your, in your life or on your journey? Right. So, so this is the difference between me and 99.9% .9 of gypsies, yeah? No one's ever heard or never watched a TV program or don't know the insides to the gypsy world up until 2009, where Big Fat Gypsy Weddings come um, to me and Paddy Doherty and asked Paddy Doherty to be the spokesman for the Irish um, for the Irish travellers. Mm -hmm. They asked me to be a spokesperson <laughs> for the gypsy community, so the Romany gypsies. So that's how okay. I played there. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, so I took that upon me. He took it upon him as well. I all I wanted to do was just to prove to the whole world that, you know what, I get up every day, I go to the gym, get my face beaten most days, you know, yeah. try as hard as I can, I don't do nothing wrong, you know, so why do we all get tired with the same brush, you know? Yeah. But when I first started doing it, I noticed that everybody turned their, like, turned their back a little bit at the beginning of me doing it. Against you? Yeah, so like, this is the sort of thing that we don't do. It's mm -hmm. against... Even in your, even in your own... It's, it's unspoke of. It's, it's, it's unspoke of in the culture to to get 
an outsider and to bring him in with a camera and to show, yeah, yeah. show the public what we're doing, what, what what you're doing. Yeah. So it was a lot. It was a hell of a lot, but I didn't care because I was just cracking on on my pathway. Mm -hmm. So if you if you know about the Paddy Docky situation, he had a lot of grief off in it as well. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of grief only from our own community because mm. it's just certain things that you can do, certain things you can't. can't. That was one of the main things is don't don't let no outsiders into the mm -hmm. community. So that so. did that have anything to do with the thing that you said happened to you? I've been shot three times. Yeah, um, was there anything over, to do with cultural feuds. stuff? Over feuds. So over feuds in the community and. Um, what is where if you're a fighter in the community and you held and you hold a lot of respect and where me and my brothers do hold mm -hmm. a lot of respect, they come to your and because we don't use police in the community. Mm -hmm. I know I don't advise that to anybody in the world, but mm -hmm. that's just how we are. I've been shot mm -hmm. three times. I've never made a statement in my mm -hmm. life. That's been the biggest probably downfall because I ain't done that wrong ninety nine percent yeah. of the times. But that is if you are mm -hmm. a true person to what you believe in, that's how we roll, you know. Mm -hmm. no, so no yeah, so then a, a lot of the community they. They, they take it upon themselves to come to you, to mm -hmm. say, look, we don't want a feud. Can you sort this problem out? Yeah. My last documentary on Channel 5, Here Comes the Gypsies, there was a fight in my yard. I don't know whether you've seen Here Comes, mm -hmm. my, uh, Here Comes the Gypsies, Channel 5. Mm -hmm. Hit TV show, yeah? So yeah. there's six episodes, I was on four of them. Okay. Yeah, and, and then obviously the boxing club showing them what we do as a profession, and then the culture. They, mm -hmm. You don't really see many bare knuckle fights and you don't know what they're about. And then if you watch Here Comes the Gypsies, I think you can still get it on. Um, is it? Where can uh, we watch it? Well, yeah, so it's on Channel 5. Channel. So if you go to the, what's the app called? on um, um, like Catch Up Channel 5. Yeah, Catch Up Channel 5. Yeah, so Here Catch Comes the, the Gypsies. Here Comes the Gypsies. Right? Since 2009, up until last year, I've done a documentary for Channel 4, Channel 5 or ITV mm -hmm. every year. Yeah, all to do so that kind all of, to do oh, everything okay. has been gypsy related mm -hmm. and all i wanted to do at the beginning of doing all of this mm -hmm. is to help because if you're a fighter you need to be able to sell mm -hmm. tickets people need to know you if you're not mm -hmm. known as a fighter and you're not an entertainer and i knew i was an entertainer mm -hmm. yeah. you know if you yeah, can entertain yeah. yourself if you can yeah. sit in a cell <laughs> and think you know what i've got the best cell mate here yeah everyone yeah. wants to be with me yeah. i know yeah, they do yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. so that's what that. i'm trying to say there why did is, you go to prison what so over the culture so what happened was there was a little bit of an incident. Um, so it was a family incident. I've got to word this very... Uh, uh, very yeah, fine. of course, no, of course. Of course. Yeah. So family. there was a little bit of grief and it, where it was close family as well. My dad just died at the time. So my brothers, and it was to do with kids related. Mm -hmm. My brothers rung me up and said, look, we need to go down and speak to these because there's been a little bit of aggravation. So we pulled up. They're just to, um, basically, we've knew these people my whole life. My mum and dad's knew these people before we was even born, you know, and mm -hmm. they was, they're was they like distant relation or whatever. But well, after my dad died, there was a few words. So then my mum was getting in the car and apparently he's pushed the door shut on my mum, you know, and, and been really rude to us. My dad just died. She's upset. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah, down yeah. and talk to her. A lot of grief. Lot I walk in there on my own and then they all come running out with choppers, with they come running out with golf clubs, they come running out. Like, there's a load of them. But I don't realise and I walk right into it. Yeah, yeah and I've got nothing. got my hands in my pocket. Mm. But they had a phone call. Look, I found out this after. They had a phone call to say, Tony's coming down and watch what happens when he comes down. Yeah, he's heard this, he's heard that. So I understand them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when mm -hmm. I'm walking in there, I don't realise, do I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've known these people my whole life, never had a bad word mm -hmm. with them, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just want to go down there and say, look, don't talk to her no more. She won't talk to you. And let's yeah. just call it a day. You mm -hmm. know, like just, but come out and within seconds, there's just like, um, yeah, just like a little bit of um, swinging and so throwing about. So kind of preceded you then? Well, if I wouldn't have been an MMA fighter and I wouldn't have mm. known what I actually known, I would have had my head chopped off, as simple as mm. that. So lucky enough, I had lucky, to. Lucky yeah, anyway. but it, it, in the scruffle, what happened? I got one of their weapons off of them and, um, and someone lost a few fingers, three fingers. That, um, one of them had a chest bait broken. I had a, like a little black eye or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they was a, it was carnage. But I walked in there with nothing to have mm -hmm. a conversation, you know. So I got remanded over it. Ten months okay. on remand going up for it. Okay. When we got the court, so it was supposed to be a ten-day trial or whatever, seven-day trial. And then second day of the trial, it got acquitted. Brilliant. Yeah, what was lucky enough. But then ten months... Um, yeah, they opened my eyes to to the other side. That was something that I never wanted to do. I, all I wanted to do, ever do was be with my kids. Yeah, I wanted mm -hmm. to do my cage fighting. Yeah. I wanted to, you know, like make a stamp mm -hmm. uh, in history. And um, yeah, that set me back, but it made me realise mm -hmm. yeah. what's important mm -hmm. in life. You see, so you're still solving problems then 
Or, so it's one of these things that in the community, you mm. can't just say I've had enough and no, mm. I don't want to. Because, mm. and the reason that I wouldn't do that is because now, if you can't go to the police, yeah, and then you have an argument with these people, yeah, you need and, someone there and, to sort and out. these people, yeah, can come to you and they can destroy you and your whole family, yeah, who are you going to go to? Person who is so, the, so, somebody that, that has authority <clears throat> that you know that can diplomat and sort it out. Sort and if out. they give your word that it's done, yeah, then, then the problem's resolved, the problem yeah. Resolved. If you don't do that and then people come to you and anything happens to them after, yeah, you've got to live with that. You know, so so you're just like that. I don't want no one to turn up today. Please, everyone leave me alone. I just want to go to the gym. Mm. Yeah, but that happened for quite a few years. And as I say, I was on the site at Virginia Waters, um, where all my family lives. I moved off in there because I couldn't take no more of keep getting arrested and involved in everybody else's drama. And I just, you know what? I thought I'm going to paddle my own canoe for a bit. Mm -hmm. And then that's what basically the last 18 months of my life See, it's the last 18 months of my life, um, yeah, has been a turnaround because now I've like pretty much, I'm just concentrating in, I'm, I'm concentrating on my pathway and not everyone mm -hmm. else's. Because when you're on that and you're the head of a community, mm -hmm. yeah, then, and that everybody in the community, you've got the weight of them on your shoulders. Exactly. So lucky enough, really, that when I moved off that, I explained to everyone I'm on bail at the moment. Mm -hmm. I've got a very, very serious... Um, uh, matter that, that's coming mm. up. I can't get in no more. I can't take nobody else's stress, nobody mm. else's arguments, nobody else's mm -hmm. grief. Yeah, I just need to be left alone. Mm. As simple as that. Those few months, we, uh, 18 months, let's say, that I flipped rounds from being a fighter to now, yeah, pretty much going to be at the top of putting shows on mm -hmm. at the highest level in the boxing industry. I'm doing something that I love every day. I have more time with my kids, mm -hmm. you know. I wipe my hands with it. They've got their time to retire mm -hmm. with everything. And everyone else, they're going to have to look for somebody else to sort their troubles out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, because yeah. I'm just all, I'm on a one-way street at the minute to put as much content on rep yeah, that TV, on. rep that sport. Rep that sport. And I'm going to show the whole world about, about how hard it is to be a boxer, to mm -hmm. be an MMA fighter, to be a kickboxer, what you have to go through, you know, and the latest and the best. So that, that's my pathway at the moment. So when you was in prison? Pardon? When you was in prison? Yeah. What was you going through? What was I going through? Yeah. So Because obviously you got daughter there, innit? Yeah, I've got five kids. Okay, five. Yeah, yeah. I've got five okay. kids. Yeah, so what was you going through so, like, mentally? So really... Because you're a fighter as well. What so. I was going to get back at is that the, the grief of, of this situation, what happened with the carnage, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the guy who had his fingers chopped off, his son is with my ex-missus who I've got three kids with so I wasn't allowed to see my kids for two years mm -hmm. after from that day yeah I had my kids every single day of my life yeah and that was a morning I woke up where I never seen my kids mm -hmm. until that day walking in to talk and then uh, I'm in I'm in prison and I'm not allowed to speak to my kids I'm not allowed to have anything to do with three of them obviously my little baby girl which is um really funny because as I said when I was in prison they had me on close visit and she come in and visit me. And the first visit, yeah, that <laughs> I had with, from my little baby girl, mm -hmm. she went, don't worry, dad. Mm -hmm. She went, I'll get you out. <laughs> I'm looking at her like that through the things. She's going, you're going to be all right. I'll get you out. And I think to myself, I really need to hear that, but I never expected it from you. Yeah. yeah. And then a few months later, when I got out, she was going, I'm going to dig you an hole. So mm. I never just took notice of it. Yeah. When I come out of court, obviously I went straight back to the house mm. and then she kept saying to me, dad, 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 come and have a look at me hole. So I thought, <laughs> still crazy. When I get to the back garden, there's an eight foot hole. You couldn't yeah. see the bottom of oh, it. Every day she come home from school, She's she had a back. spoon, you know, one of those big cooking yeah. spoons yeah. and she'd be in the back garden. <laughs> Just digging. Digging a hole to get me out. What do you think of your dad? I love him. Oh. No, yeah. spoiler. Uh, <laughs> she wraps me around her little finger. <laughs> oh so yeah, um, but I, I got, I got, yeah, I got. Two, um, as I say, two baby mums. One of them is um, a traveller, and one's a non-traveller. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. the non-traveller one is Jesse Wallace of EastEnders. You know, Cat Slater, it's her sister. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Danielle sister. Mason. Yeah, okay. so that's her mum. That's your mum? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah. she does the Christmas shows with her aunt sometimes, doesn't she, in London? Yeah. And she's going through the same drama school, the same, oh, like, yeah, yeah she's been there. Um, I did dance with 
dancing Ew, now. She brilliant. put on the gymnastic team. Oh, okay. They're wow. putting, they're betting her the exact same way as our She's going to be a star, I can tell. Actress, aren't he? And she used to oh, do she? But she's not allowed to get here. Where's your next fight, by the way? Right, so I was, let's let's get on to this now. So um, BKFC, yeah? Mm. It's bare knuckle, bare boxing, knuckle boxing from America. Professional bare knuckle. So um, they um, rung me up when just before they got the professional license. I know a fighter out there called um, Bobby Gunn. So mm -hmm. he fought um, Roy Jones Jr., top boxer. He's American mm -hmm. gypsy. Yeah. So he rung me up. He said, look, this bare knuckle game, it's all about you. We're going to get it to the UK. Yeah. Are you going to be on board? I said, yeah, no problem. He said, I'm going to give you the guy's number who's running it, who's going, mm -hmm. which is Dave Fieldman, which is a nice a gentleman. He rung me up. He said to me, look, as soon as it comes to the UK, I want to put you on the, uh, on the main show. I said, no problem. Mm -hmm. So I carried on with my MMA and then all of a sudden, two years later, it has grown into, you know, like MMA when it mm. first came out, yeah. mm -hmm. it was the fastest growing sport. Mm -hmm. Well, huge. BKFC is, the, is now the new fastest growing it's sport. Huge, it's huge, all the top huge. UFC fighters, so all the top UFC fighters. Who retired from UFC are going into it now. They don't even retire they from UFC. Retire, they're going straight into the bed. They just swapping over from UFC mm -hmm. to BKFC. Is there more money there? More money. More injuries, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is erratic. It's, you do it's, not it's, understand. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a. It's a Did you watch the fight the other day with um, Mike Perry and Riff? Riff is it Rockhold? What's his name? Rockhold, the UFC I think champion. I that fight. Um, he, yeah, I, know, I know the Rockhold you're talking. Yeah, massive it was fight. Massive. He was UFC champion. Yeah, so they fought. Yeah, the other day, and. Um, Conor McGregor has just turned professional at um, BKFC as well. He's changed over. So they're basically waiting at the moment for his Michael Chandler thing to be finished. He's doing a documentary oh, with yeah, them or whatever. Oh, yeah, doing a series of UFC and then, series. And then um, as soon as they get the UFC series sorted out mm -hmm. and they've got Conor on there, I mean, he's undercard 100%. Because the first show that they had in the UK, I was on the undercard of Mike Perry and MVP. I'd done all the training, 10-week training camp, done the press conference, done the weigh-in, and then we went, didn't we, the day before at Wembley? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I'll take my little mascot with me, you know? <laughs> she keeps me calm. i <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so we go all the way to Wembley the, the day before for the face-off, yeah. and the guy pulled out. Wow. And it's unheard of to, so to someone to, fight, uh, to pull out the day before as well. It's like very hard yeah. to get a replacement. Mm. Yeah. So then after that, I was obviously upset about it. They said, look, we promise that when we get the American show back over it, there is one in the UK, mm -hmm. but it's not as big as the American one. Mm -hmm. He said, we'll have you back on it. Yeah. So then I've carried on my training, thinking to myself, do you know what? That I'm going to have to go back to MMA. This is it's mm -hmm. too long-winded, this too is. Long, yeah. And then the other day, Terry Brazier, which is a Bellator ex-champion, he's ex-world champion at Bellator, um, UC MMA and Bama. So he's he's had the hardest fight in BKS FC history against um, Funny Chris Packett. I mean, sorry, Danny Christie. <laughs> That's a guy I hate as well. <laughs> I could By tell. The way, I could tell. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's one of these people that gets on YouTube and keeps calling my name, yeah. calling my name because yeah, he's yeah. a lame, hungry whore. What's his name again? Yeah, he's the British champion. He's um, Danny Christie. Oh, yeah, but he's a fame hungry him. whore, basically. Fame hungry, yeah. Yes, and right, he, cool. yeah, and all he does is avoids. Avoids and, and just avoids, talks and avoids, avoids, and and avoids, avoids, and, 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 avoids and avoids. So uh, there you go. Um, but yeah, so he had the hardest fight with him ever recorded in a BKFC history. It was a right mm. war. So um, they said, look, if you want to fight Terry Brazier, you can be on the undercard of the Conor McGregor show. No problem. He said, and then hopefully we can move on from there. So after all this time, I'm happy that I've st stuck him on my training. I haven't concentrated so much on MMA and everything. Mm -hmm. And I would like... Yeah, obviously to be the undercard of the, you and everything goes well with that. You will, you're going up, man. Can yeah, tell, it's yeah. all positive. Yeah. One more question before we switch, because we've got to talk about some other sports before we finish yeah. up. Who is the best gypsy fighter of all time? Best, oh, Tony the Rhino Giles. Definitely. I'm not saying the <laughs> boxing, but I'm saying no, the roughest no, no, motherfucker no, 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 ever no, to no, walk no, because you on might this have had, planet. You might have a hero or something. I don't know. In it, like you know, a boxer of a hero of what all of you lot idolize. It all depends what you mean about the fighter. I mean, because nobody's mm -hmm. been through the ground game. Like mm -hmm. I, I've learned for the last 14 years. Mm -hmm. Like every single day of my life, as mm -hmm. soon as I woke up and I've been with the highest level of training, mm -hmm. how to snap somebody's bones in the quickest possible time, to take their legs out, take them to the floor. 
and either t I'll make them unconscious them. or break their bones. Every, yeah, okay? every single day, yeah. what? Every so, gypsy fighter. Well, if they don't, name. they it's should do now. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'll tell you, right, so for 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 all in, I would say the rhino, yes. But okay. yeah. let's moving on from there. Mm -hmm. Boxing, I would say Tyson Fury. Got That's my be. guy. Tyson All day long. Tyson. He's got the best. To, He's the best. You can people can hate him, they can love him. I love him, yeah. yeah but yeah. they watch him. I love everything. Every about him. person watches mm -hmm. Tyson. But I just 100%. like him because he's himself. What? Mm -hmm. So he's been to everyone's back garden, mm -hmm. yeah, and beat him. Like, look, he mm -hmm. went over and beat Klitschko. Nobody thought he would. Done I knew Wilder. that he would. He went to Wilder, mm -hmm. done him. So he sells a fight more than anything. So mm -hmm. it's brilliant. Oh, his younger guy, brother man. Tommy's trying to follow in his footsteps, but he's going down the right pathway the with the YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. The world. with the YouTube. He fought mm -hmm. that Jake Paul the other day. Yeah, didn't he beat he? him as well, didn't he? He beat him, yeah. He beat yeah. Jake Paul. Mm. Yeah. Do you, are you interested in any other sports? What? So yeah, I love I love boxing, as I say, with yeah. a passion. And I, my friend Josh Kelly fought the other night, and mm. I've got. A, he took my breath the other night because when mm. I'm in the gym and I watch him watch him train in the mm. gym, to walk out of a gym, yeah, and to walk into an arena and mm -hmm. to do what he done the other night mm -hmm. is matrix. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's only ten percent of what he can give. Mm -hmm. Now he's, a, I think he's WBO champion at the minute. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's um, and he is a true, true warrior. Mm -hmm. He is going to be a Hall of Famer, one hundred percent. Josh Kelly, Josh Kelly, look out for Josh with, Kelly. Uh, Adam Booth, yeah, yeah. Um, so Adam Booth, yeah. Um, him and um, something the ex trainer. He um, used to train um, David A. Yeah, yeah, David A. What about the football? What, what about no, no, one sec. What about the um, the the boxing this week? Who, 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 the boxing who this bring, week. Yeah. With so, Spence and Crawford. Oh my God. See, that <laughs> fight's been talked about so much. I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything I can say that hasn't already been talked about. Yeah. But all I can say is, who do I want to win? I think Spencer, I, has got, well, I think Spencer's going to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that. On paper, I reckon Crawford, they, they probably think's the favourite. Mm -hmm. But I think Spencer's going to win. I really do. Because yeah. just to argue the flame, it's like what I said about Josh Kelly. When he walked into that arena and he was walking towards that ring, he had this look. Mm -hmm. If you look in his eyes, he had the yeah, flare yeah, no in his eyes. Win. Now, I know you probably hear it about it's all from the eyes. Mm -hmm. But they, if you know about it, yeah, and you know that you're 100% focused mm -hmm. on what exactly what it is that you're going to do when you walk mm -hmm. in there, yeah, you've got that look in your eye. Mm -hmm. And he had that warrior mindset mm -hmm. the other night. So if whoever walks out with that warrior mindset, yeah, will be the man on the night. Mm -hmm. 100%. So, all right, um, Kill? No, no, I just, I, just, I just tried to talk about the sports. I was trying to go through because mm -hmm. we're running out of time, but mm. you wanted to ask your other questions, so I just left you a bit. Yeah, it's no, no problem, no, so carry on. No, 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 no. <laughs> carry on. So what I'll say- By about the way, Jamaica. big up to the Jamaican um, women's <laughs> national team. Yeah. Well done. Well done, you've done so great. Drawing with the Same fifth, number, um, number five seed in the world, France. Big up. Yeah. What is the No. That thing you had on the laptop, the bowler, the fast bowler. Oh, yeah, come on. Jimmy Anderson. They have Jimmy Anderson as the greatest fast bowler <laughs> ever. What a joke. <laughs> Move on. What a joke. <laughs> How many minutes have we got there? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So let's move on to kickboxing now. Okay, yeah, let's And do if that. you want to hear about the most fierce up and coming fighter in the UK, he's mm -hmm. literally, he's like an Alison Overing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rion the Beast. Yeah, never he heard of him. is. You never heard of him? Rank no. number two. He fought the other night. We 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 actually, um, me and my good friends, Mr. Shucker, went and watched him at, at <laughs> London York Hall yeah. and um, yeah. CFS. It was on. Mm -hmm. I think you can watch that on Leapfrog. So um, they was there filming it as well. Mm -hmm. What you said his name is? His name's Rion the Beast. Rion. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna look up that. So if you, I, do you know how I met this guy? I was in high mm -hmm. down prison. I mm -hmm. walked into the gym and the, he was the first gym orderly. And he was a gym orderly. Yeah, yeah, he was a gym orderly. But this is the first time in prison that I got out of the cell, I think, was to go to the gym. Yeah, so then obviously I went over to the gym. It was all new to me, wasn't it? And they'll walk mm. them like that. He's looked at me. He's went, you are the rhino. He said, you need he to help me. Yeah, he said, you need to help me. I'm going to be a kickboxer. Mm. He said, I'm going to get into it. I'm going to do exactly what you're doing. When I get out, I am going to be number one, I promise. And I looked at him like that and I just thought to myself, well, he's definitely got what, mm. you know, like the right mindset anyway. Himself. 
didn't know what it was all about, but I spoke to a few of the other people. He was a gentleman, yeah, like mm-hmm. a proper nice guy. I knew that anyway, 100%, but I never knew what he was like at fighting. Everyone else who said to me, who has trained with him, they said, this guy is the beast. He's come out, and ever since he's been out, he has been on a one-way train to the top. So they're trying all to right. get him a kickboxing fight. At the moment, I think they've been in talks with Tam Khan and um, Andrew Tate was making a comeback into the kickboxing. So if he was making a comeback, he would have to go through the beast. Rion, you've heard Rion. it here. All right, cool. So if that fight well, comes Hopefully off, Rion the beast and Tate get a fight. Hopefully we want Rion to win. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is another episode of All Sports. We've had Tony Giles. Thank you. And his lovely daughter. And um, Glenn. This is Q. This is QBE. And this is... All Sports. No problem, it's another episode. Shut down. Yo, yo, yo. You said we'll always be together. Please, eh? Spend these billions in together. Please. She don't want my copy name. All she knows is I throw one night with me. It's gonna change. And she knows and she cares and she stares. She's not scared. She likes my gangster name. Gangster style, gangster ways, it's a gangster day, gangster